Ang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you for joining today's press conference. The Salary Standardization Law 6 aims to make state workers' salaries more competitive with the private sector, boosting productivity, improving service delivery, and enhancing overall government effectiveness. The President's signing of Executive Order No. 64 last August 2024 brings us a step closer to the implementation of the SSL-6. That was why, on the same day that the EO was released, I already instructed our concerned EBM officials to hasten the completion of the guidelines and inform the public of the implications of the new salary adjustments and allowances for our government employees. And just this morning, we have already signed these guidelines and initiated the process of disseminating this crucial update to all relevant agencies and stakeholders. With this in mind, we are holding this briefing to ensure that all necessary information is clearly communicated and understood by our stakeholders. In the 2024 General Appropriations Act, we have earmarked 36 billion pesos under the MPBF, or the Miscellaneous Personal Benefits Fund, for the implementation of the first tranche of SSL-6 this year. Meanwhile, in the 2025 National Expenditure Program, or NEP, we have allocated some 70 billion pesos also under the MPBF for the second tranche and adjustment of the first tranche. These allocations, as I mentioned earlier, prioritize the welfare of our civil servants, knowing that they're the ones who carry on their shoulders the weight of our nation's aspirations. Liliwanagin po natin ang salient features ng EO64. We will explain how we derive the figures for the increase, which have been based in the comprehensive study conducted together with GCG and DBM. We will also cover the funding requirements, the specific groups of employees affected by the salary standardization 6, and all the pertinent details of great interest to our stakeholders. Kasama rin po sa pag-uusapan natin ang tinatawag na medical allowance na, na magsisimula next year, a key component to guarantee that our government personnel can attend to their health needs without a new financial burden. Since 2017 po, I have been a strong advocate for providing a subsidy to support our government employees in accessing health maintenance organization type of benefits. Sabi ko, bakit ang private sector meron at ibang kawanin ng gobyerno, pero hindi po sa kabuhuhan. As I have said before, and I will say it again, I am pleased that it is under President DBM's administration that this long-standing advocacy has finally become a reality. In fact, in our 2025 proposed budget, we plan to set aside, or we have already set aside, 9.5 billion pesos for the purpose. And as we move forward with these initiatives, we remain committed to transparency, fairness, and the continuous improvement of the lives of our public servants. Let me reiterate that through these efforts, we are not just augmenting compensation. We are building a government workforce that is more empowered, more dedicated, and more capable of delivering services to the Filipino people which they deserve. Thank you, and we look forward to your questions and further discussions on this important matter.